All right, first of all, I was gonna shave and clean myself up a bit, but I just, I'm in the mood to talk right now. I didn't feel like going through like this 30 minute man care routine. So just deal with me looking ugly. I can't always be pretty for you people. Hello, it's Josh Thomas from The Bit Block here. And as you already know from the title and the thumbnail, I actually think that 2024 is not a bad year for Nintendo Switch. In fact, this isn't even close to the worst year for Nintendo Switch. And so I wanted to make a video where we go over all the games that we know of so far that are coming to Nintendo Switch. Now, you guys know me. I'm an idiot, and so I do have to consult my notes on my phone here, so forgive that. But uh, let's get into it, shall we? Here's a list, very quickly, of the games that Nintendo themselves are publishing this year. Keep in mind, it's only the beginning of March. It's not, actually, it's not even the beginning of March yet, but it's almost March 1st, okay. So listen, we've got Mario vs. Donkey Kong. That is out now. We had the Splatoon 3 Side Order DLC, that is also out now. Those two things are somewhat recent. You know, DK, uh, Mario vs. DK was February. Splatoon 3 DLC was February. We've also, we've also got Princess Peach Showtime, which launches on March 22nd. We have Endless Ocean Luminous. I'm excited about that one. I'm a summer boy and you know it. So that's going to be really cool. That is May 2nd for Endless Ocean Luminous. We've also got Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. That's going to be in the summer, according to Nintendo so far. They should just push that back to September. I don't know. That's kind of, it's a Halloween game. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. One of the best games Nintendo's ever made. Uh, that's coming out this year. No date yet, just 2024. And then, I'm including this. Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble launches June 25th. And I'm including it because it is an exclusive for the Nintendo Switch. Yes, Sega technically is developing that. But if it's exclusive for the Switch, that means Nintendo probably gave them some money. You don't generally put a game on a system exclusively unless there's some kind of business deal going on there. So I'm including it, okay? So those are the main, like, Nintendo games. Very quick. Mario vs. DK. Splatoon 3 Side Order DLC. Princess Peach Showtime. Endless Ocean Luminous. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, Super Monkey Ball, Banana Rumble, okay? Now, that's not a bad list. We are only at, let's say, March 1st. We do not traditionally know what the second half of a year is going to bring until the summertime. Usually June, that's when we learn about the holiday releases. Now, we're not done yet. That's just like the Nintendo games that we know of for the first half of the year. Third-party games. Now, most of these are multi-platform. In fact, they might all be multi-platform. Well, one or two maybe isn't. And this isn't even a complete list. This, These are just games that stood out to me as being something that looked high quality and something you'd want to play on Nintendo Switch. Penny's Br Big Breakaway. Let me, let me rephrase that so it sounds correct. Penny's Big Breakaway. That game is out now. I am loving it. It's awesome. Unicorn Overlord comes out March 8th. Contra Operation, I want to say Galaga, but it's not Galaga. Galuga? I think it's Galuga. Contra Operation Galuga. That comes out March 12th. Monster Hunter Stories is coming this summer. The Plucky Squire is 2024. And Fantasy Life is coming out October 10th. So those are games coming from third-party developers. Not a bad list there. I mean, I... Penny's Big Breakaway is kind of an indie game, but I think it's third party because it's being published by a bigger studio or a bigger company. So Penny's Big Breakaway, Unicorn Overlord, Contra Operation Galuga, Monster Hunter Stories, The Plucky Squire, and Fantasy Life are all coming this year for Nintendo Switch. Third party games. Yes, most of those are multi-platform, but that doesn't mean it's not a new release you can pick up on your Switch. Next category is indie games. There's a lot of really cool indie games coming out this year. I'm very excited. Um, Pepper Grinder. I just played the demo. There's a free demo you can check out. Um, this is coming to Nintendo Switch and PC March, uh, March 28th, okay? It is console exclusive, I think, to the Switch. I do not know if it's coming to any other system, but that's March 28th, Pepper Grinder. Pretty cool. Try the demo. Another Crab's Treasure. This is multi-platform, but it comes out April 25th. 
World of Goo 2 is a console exclusive. It'll only be on the Switch as well as um, Steam and I think the Epic Game Store. So basically PC and the Switch, and the Switch version has exclusive four player multiplayer. Can't get that anywhere else. Um, we've also got a Ranger, a roll puzzling adventure that's coming out this summer. That looks really neat. I'm actually, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get that game. Very clever. And then a game that I have been trumpeting the praises of for quite some time, Nyad. This peaceful, awesome game. It's coming from an indie developer. So Nyad is another one I want to put on this list. That's coming in 2024. Now, the indie game list especially is incomplete for, for games that are coming to the Switch. Those are, again, ones that stood out to me as being really cool. So Pepper Grinder, Another Crab's Treasure, World of Goo 2, A Ranger, A Role-Playing Adventure, and Nyad. That is five indie games coming out for this year, you know, the first half of this year, that look really neat. Now, we've got the Nintendo published, the third-party games, and the indie games. Look at this list. Look at this imagery that I'm putting in front of your face. 90% of these games, if not more, are going to be out in the first half of 2024 for Nintendo Switch. This is not a slow year. Now, some people are going to tell me, well, yeah, but like, none of these games are huge games. Right, we don't traditionally get huge games in the first half of a year. Sometimes we do, I'm not saying it has never happened, but the first half of the year is not when you drop your major, major releases, especially Nintendo. They just don't do that very often. So, um, and you might be like, yeah, but a lot of these are like uh, remakes. Okay, I want to try to, I really want to hit home with my point here. So let me see if I can phrase this properly. For a good two years on Nintendo Switch, early on, the majority of Nintendo's releases were ports from the Wii U. I'm sure I'm going to miss some, but let's say Bayonetta 2, Pikmin 3, Super Mario 3D World. There was also Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. There was um, New Super Mario Brothers U. I mean, there was a huge list of Wii U ports, and those were like half of the library for an entire year or two of Nintendo Switch. And these were mostly just ports. They added a funky mode here, they added little things there, but nothing was major. I guess Super Mario 3D World had Bowser's Fury, that was pretty cool, but still, it was like a three hour thing, so it wasn't huge. But what's better? Remakes of games that are built from the ground up, all new visuals, new music, um, they adjust mechanics, they add some little things, actual remakes, or just ports of Wii U games. 2024 is better than 2018, it's better than 2020, and I'm sure there's even another year that it's better than as well. But there were several years on the Switch that were not good. They did not have big releases. Um, so it's not like 2024 is the first time we're not seeing a huge release right away. I want to point that out. Remember how people were like, I was complaining about the ports, the Wii U ports, and people were like, oh, you're a hater, oh, you're always negative, oh, shut up, oh, these didn't sell well, or, you know, all these excuses. And now those same people are like, man, the Switch is kind of on its last leg, we just keep getting these, like, remakes, eh, remake. How is a remake, like, the Thousand Year Door, not more impressive to you than Pikmin 3 Deluxe? What? What are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense. So anyways, I like the remakes. Remakes of some of the best games ever? Okay, that's pretty exciting to me. I also wanted to take a moment to talk about some things that I think logically could happen that we don't know of yet. First of all, Kirby. There could definitely be a Kirby game. We have not gone a single year since the creation of Kirby where we didn't get a new Kirby game. So it's imp it would be impossible. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to jinx it here, but... Every single year since like the 90s, we've gotten a Kirby game released. Sometimes they're smaller ones, but regardless, to say something Kirby will come to the Switch this year is almost a shoe in It would be the first time in the history of the character that a year went by where there wasn't a Kirby game. So I would be willing to bet a Kirby game will be announced this year. We could also get those Zelda HD remakes that people have talked about so much. Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD. Those could pop in and fill up some gaps very nicely. And then even some games that, uh, for DLC. There's still a couple candidates for DLC that I think could happen. Pikmin 4 technically could get some fun DLC. Mario Party Superstars. Yeah, that's right. I'm still holding out hope. We could get DLC for that. 
But DLC is another way that they could work on an older game, give it some new life, make a little bit of money through paid DLC, and kind of keep things flowing forward until Nintendo Switch 2 happens. So there are some things out there that definitely could still happen that haven't been announced yet. And like I said, we don't usually learn about really big releases until E3. E3 is when they're like, hey, this is what's coming out for like September, October, November, and December. That's the way things have mostly always been. Yeah, there have been times where we knew about like Tears of the Kingdom. We knew about Tears of the Kingdom early in the year, but I mean, that's not, that's an irregularity, not a common thing for us to know about that kind of stuff. Um, June of 2023, I think this is important to point out. June, the Nintendo Direct that happened in June of last year, 2023, we learned about the Pokemon Scarlet Violet DLC. That was a big part of it, opened up the Direct. We learned about Detective Pikachu Returns, Super Mario RPG being remade, WarioWare Move It. We learned about Super Mario Brothers Wonder. That was a very big release for the holiday season. We saw the Princess Peach game, and we also saw Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Now the last two games, Peach and Luigi's Mansion, those are, you know, those weren't coming out last year, but they were announced, you know, at E3. So, one, two, three, four, four games were announced in June with the Pokemon DLC as well. So if this June they announced four games, one of them being a pretty big game, then this year has been one of the better years for Nintendo Switch. This isn't an off year. I don't understand the logic behind that. Um, especially, like I said, considering there have been years that are already worse than what we're seeing right here. So, what? In closing, boop, there you go. L look at this. These are the games, and this isn't even a full list, but these are the games that you'll be able to play on your Nintendo Switch in 2024. When June comes along, I'm willing to bet that there will be at least one or two larger scale Nintendo games that will be added to this list as their holiday release. I believe Nintendo Switch 2 is coming sooner than later, but I don't think that the Switch is drying up. I'm having more fun with my Switch now than like ever before. Uh, so I, I guess the point of this video is to say I disagree with the people that are saying the Switch is not having a good year. I think it's having a pretty damn good year. And uh, I think, you know, once June comes along, we'll probably see some, some more games as well. I think the Nintendo Switch 2 is actually coming out next year. I'm gonna go back to saying that. I think it's spring of 2025, and I think we'll have plenty of games to play on the Switch until then.